Welcome back to Excel Match Trick number 986. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we want to talk about a certain lookup situation that causes most of us trouble. Here's the situation. We have a lookup value Joe. And when we look through our column, there's duplicates. But our goal is still to do a lookup. We need to return the group numbers associated with Joe and list them horizontally. Now, if we're using a program like Access, creating a query to do this is easy, right? We simply type the criteria Joe, list our field name group numbers, and the query simply extracts. Has no problem with duplicate um, values here. Here it is, though. We're in Excel. We have a single lookup value. There's duplicates in this column. Standard lookup functions just cannot handle that. Further, if we change the criteria here to Mo, notice that we have still have duplicates. But really, if we're going to do a lookup, we're interested in the relative position. So Mo, if I'm getting the group number for Mo, I need relative position 2 and 7. So notice when I change this to fill, now I have relative position 3, 4, 5, and 8. So what does this mean? It means we have to switch over to an array formula. And the reason why is because, look, we need in our single cell formula, we need to actually create an array of relative positions to tell the lookup function, hey, I need you to get the third, fourth, fifth, and eighth group number. Up here, before we even started, all I did was a basic count if function to count how many fills there are. But now, again, the main concept is create this array of relative positions in our formula. Well, we can do this, and I have done this in many other videos. We simply create our formula element that creates an array of all the relative positions. So I'm going to use the row function and say, hey, row, there's all the group numbers, F4. That gives me 14, 15, 16. That won't work because I need 1, 2, 3. So I simply say, hey, from that, I'm going to subtract the first element, F4. Now look at this. This is what one of the parts of this formula that makes it an array formula. This right here, F9, well, that's an array of values. An array simply means more than one item, right? An operation on an array, that means subtracting this number 14 from an array. Boom, we have an array formula. All right, so if I highlight that, it would and evaluate it. 14 minus 14 is 0. I don't want that, so I add one back in. That little formula element, F9, seen in many other videos, that's the part that creates our relative positions. But we have a condition. We don't want all the relative positions. We want just the ones that are associated with fill. So in 2007 and earlier, you have to use the small and if function to get at those relative positions. Remember, ultimately, we're dumping those relative positions into some lookup function. So for the logical test, I'm just going to say, hey, this column, F4, any of those in there equal to fill F4. I'm going to type a comma. Now, this is also an array operation, right? An array of values with some operation, whereas this is a math operation, this one is a comparative operation. Now, logical test argument in if, if you put an array calculation there, no matter where you put this if, because this if is going to could go into other functions, we're going to put it into the small function. But no matter where you put it, it will require Control Shift Enter. All right, that's the condition, and there are the values if. Uh, true. So if we get a Joe, please give us the relative position. False, we just flat out leave that out. And guess what? We get an array. Remember, our goal was to create this array of relative positions in our formula, F9. There they are. The falses will flat out be ignored by our small function. The next trick is, how do we extract 3 here, and then when we copy over to the next cell, a 4, and then copy over to the next cell, a 5, etc. No problem. We use that array we just created inside the small. Small is great. You tell it, extract the first, the second, the third smallest, and it will do just that. There's the array. Come to the end, and comma. The K is, well, we need to, in this cell, have 1. And then over here, 2, and then 3. Now we're extracting these 
items horizontally. So I'm going to use the columns function. Columns is great. I'm sitting in G16. So I'm going to type over here, dollar sign G16. Notice I've locked the column reference, but not the row. G16. Now the question is that columns is asking is how many columns are there from G to G? One. But notice this one is locked, this one is not. So when we get to the next cell, it will ask the question how many columns are there from G to H? There'll be two. That's called a formula number incrementer. All right, so close parentheses, we have our K. This requires Control Shift Enter, Control Shift, and Enter. Curly brackets are Excel's way of telling you, hey, I understood this was an array calculation. Control Shift Enter is you telling Excel that this is an array calculation. Now I'm going to copy this over to the side. And there we see we have our relative positions. We'll turn that one off in just a moment. But as we go to the side, we have our relative positions. We simply put it inside of the index function. Index is a lookup. The array, well, what are we looking up? Group numbers. F4, comma, the row number, that whole big small right there, simply delivering a row number or relative position. Control Shift and Enter. We told Excel we're doing an array formula. It put those curly brackets up there. Now, let's turn this off. And if I, just for illustrations, notice that in this situation we have two values. If we were to use the if error function to turn to show blank in this cell, the if error would run this big, huge array formula every single time to determine whether it's an error or not. So when you get a big array formula, especially when you have huge columns and you're, ex you're extracting lots of records, it's better to use an if to show nothing instead of if error. So I'm going to come here and say if. The logical test, well, I'm going to steal this little columns right here. Logical test, when the columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, et cetera, is greater than our count, F4, that means we're past column 2 as I extract these to the side. Then what do I want to show? A, um, nothing, which is the syntax is double quote, double quote. That's a null text string comma. Otherwise, that means if we haven't passed the second column, please run that big, huge array formula. Come to the end, Control, uh, close parentheses, Control, Shift, Enter. 6857. I guess I should turn off uh, speak turn cells off on speak it. On enter. All right, so let's see if this works. Look at that, fill, and we have single value, look up, multiple matches, extract multiple items, display horizontally. Now, in 2010 or later, we don't have to use the small. We can actually use the aggregate function instead of the small, and it won't require Control Shift Enter. Now, watch this. I'm going to do a little trick, Control CC. I've copied that just up to the comma, and then I want the logical test here. Remember, that's inside of the uh, if, Control C, I'm loading up over here. And then over here, I want my formula element that creates all the relative positions. Control C, I'm loading them up over here. And then here's my number incrementer. Control C, so I've loaded it up here now. I'm going to come down here, and we'll see how to do the aggregate. I'm going to select the whole first part of the formula because it's the same. Now notice that I am in the index, and it's just we, we saw that the small just delivers a row number, right? But now we're going to use aggregate. Aggregate is amazing because functions 14 to 19 can handle array calculations without using Control Shift Enter. Now I'm going to select 15. That's so cool. So then aggregate now is doing exactly what the small does, comma. Now we're going to have to say ignore for the options argument here. Ignore errors because we're going to get divide by zero errors comma, and the array. That is the function argument inside of aggregate that can handle array operations. Now check this out. Remember, we're after row numbers. The small needs row numbers. In parentheses, we're going to put our formula element that creates our array of relative positions and close parentheses. Then I'm going to divide it by our condition. Now I have to put it in parentheses, so open parentheses, and boop. 
So there's our condition, which means is anything in there equal to fill. Now watch this. When I click on this screen tip here and hit the F9, notice we're doing division. This little, the bottom part here, by the way, F9 gives me trues and falses. Well, true is 1 and false is 0. So when I F9 that, we see Z divide by false is the same as dividing by 0. That's divide by 0 error. There's our 3, 4, 5, and 8. Compare and contrast this up to the array of relative positions that match our criteria that we had up in the if function. The if, instead of a divide by 0, had false. Here we have divide by 0. So that's why that 6 right there is so perfect inside the aggregate. Control Z. All right, you ready? Comma. The K, that's going to be our number incrementer as we copy to the side. Close parentheses. The aggregate is simply delivering a relative position for the index function. Come to the end, close parentheses on that, and close parentheses on the if. Now watch this, Control Enter. I didn't Control Shift Enter, I just Control Enter, which puts the formula in the cell and keeps the cell selected. No curly brackets, copy it to the side. Now, I immediately want to come here and prove something about the aggregate function. Right here, the array. That argument in the aggregate can handle array calculations. But what if we were to put the if function? So I'm going to come up here. We want to learn something about the if function and about the uh, functions that can handle array calculations without Control Shift Enter. So I just copied that whole thing there. I'm going to copy this, and we're going to build a new formula down here. So I'm going to paste that whole thing. And right here, oh, let's see, just click on that, and F9. Divide by zeros, right? Why didn't we just use the if in this argument? Con I'm going to del uh, control Z, and I'm going to delete it. The reason why is because if I come over here, notice I'm sitting in that array argument. Now I'm going to click on this on the clipboard and paste that if. Now if I highlight this in the F9, well, it's delivering the same relative positions, but the it falses instead of divide by 0. The problem with this is, is we'll still have to do Control Shift Enter. So that logical test argument for the if function require, if you have an array calculation there, it requires Control Shift Enter no matter where you put it in the larger function. So even though that array argument can handle array calculations, the if argument logical test with an array calculation trumps the array argument in the aggregate function. So because there's an array calculation there, we're going to have to do control shift enter. Let's just try it without control shift enter and copy it to the side, right? We're getting that number because of implicit intersection. Anytime you put an array formula next to the data set, you risk getting an incorrect answer from implicit intersection. Over here, we get num errors, no curly brackets. But watch this, Control Shift and Enter. Now we see the curly brackets up here, right? And it will work if we copy it to the side. In general, it's probably. Uh, more polite to yourself and to, to others to uh, not put the if function here because you know what's going to happen you're like you're looking at the aggregate and thinking oh yeah it doesn't require control shift enter and then maybe you get the wrong answer or something so if you're going to use aggregate might as well do that divide by zero right because this if logical test is going to trump that aggregate so if you want to do aggregate, that's why we're doing it this way. We get divide by 0, but then we have this groovy little uh, option here to ignore errors. All right, that was a bunch about ex having a lookup, a single lookup value, duplicates in a column, and how to extract multiple items and display them vertically. Also, some differences between aggregate and small, and even a good look at that if function and how it can trump when it comes to Control-Shift-Enter. All right, we'll see you next trick.